All right. It says we're live. I'm going to believe it for the time being. You guys come in here and let me know if you uh, the volume and the video is okay. Michael Bunker here with the Bunker Nation with Mrs. Bunker. She's here too. She's uh, here to answer all your questions, everything you ever wanted to know about anything. Science, physics, Labrador retrievers. And laboratory retrievers. Pamplemousse. <laughs> so y'all come on in here. Somebody say hi. <clears throat> Pardon me. Talk in the uh, comment section. Let me know where you are. What's going on? We really don't have a topic for today. So we may. Ah. Longer. <laughs> I don't have the COVID, I promise. I just have allergy. But, uh, whoo. I should have worn a face mask. Keep, keep from giving me the COVID. You're not supposed to say it on the video. Yeah. You just got me demonetized. You're not supposed to say that name you're not allowed to say. Really? Yeah. The I, they, coverts? Don't say anything that sounds like it. Really? It'll get you demonetized? Talking about well, it? they they automatically demonetize my videos and they come back later and monetize them, but you're not really supposed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. They don't like it. The YouTubes don't like it. All right, so I've got a little allergy uh, thing going on, but so we don't really have a topic for the day. So it's going to depend on you, the audience, uh, how long we're going to be here because we have a date night planned, and so. The sooner this thing's over, the sooner we're going to have date night. All right, y'all. Come on in. Say hi. I don't see anybody saying hi. Maybe our video is not working. There's seven people. Hello, y'all. Say say hi. Um, what you want to do is hit the like button. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Pat. Tell me where you're at. As far as uh, ending a sentence in a preposition, tell me where you're at. And uh, And if you have a question for Mrs. Bunker, who is here, or if you have a question for me, maybe you want to know what's going on in the world or how to survive, how to start a fire with a chocolate protein donut muffin. We'll get to that in a minute. We may not be here very long. We haven't had, we've had a couple of highs. We don't have any questions. Nobody, nothing anybody wants to stop. Mrs. Bunker came all this way to visit with you. I do declare. I do declare. You're doing a uh, yeah. Gone with the Wind? Yeah. This is my fan from Colonial Williamsburg. Colonialism? Oh, Ooh, my gosh. You're going to get, you're gonna get, you're gonna get uh, canceled. <laughs> I got allergies, so I got to drink the uh, Pamplemousse. Protein donut equals highly flammable. Wait, what does that mean? I'm not sure what that means. This is a protein donut, but it's in the shape of a muffin with frosting on it. I'm going to show you all in a minute. I just made these. From Mississippi. And uh, hello, Mississippi. Hello, uh, New Jersey. So we'll talk about this in a minute. But Mrs. Bunker, was this any good? You got to taste it. Was it any good? Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good for a protein donut. Mm -hmm. And it's a protein donut that has the same amount of calories as one of those little deals of uh, yogurt that you eat. Yeah. Or, or, or a slice of bread. It has the same amount of calories as a slice of bread. And you could eat six of these. Well, I could eat six of these. And you get about 70 grams of protein. But it's like eating six or seven slices of bread. You're not supposed pretty to good. How's the, you You got to read the question. I know. So later on. Uh, oh, by the way, later on, people, future people. People that are time traveling and you're watching this while it's not live in the future. That feels so good. Keep that up. See, we have no air conditioning except for this fan. Um, you future people, greetings. According to the statistics, if you greet the future people, you do better on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> greetings, future people. So how is the CNA stuff going, Danielle? CNA yeah. meaning certified nurses assistant. Pretty good. I probably won't be real active in it until, um, I don't know. I've got a job in the meantime, so it's going pretty post, well. Till post thing we're not supposed to say. Yeah. Yeah, lots of protein. <laughs> like that's ever going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to say that those things on YouTube. Uh, that feels so good. It is uh, very humid. 
and it's not overly hot. I talked about this yesterday. It's not, I mean, we're usually, we can be in the hundreds in late June easily. So I'm happy with 92, 93, but it's very humid. And we don't have any air movement going on other than this fan. So All right, y'all. I predict a very, very short program. Based on the data that I've gathered. Oh, that's so sweet of you. You guys look great. Thank you, Billy. Just want to stop by and say hello. Hello. Long hair looks great. Well, thank you. I, I keep being afraid that I'm going to look like the six-fingered man, but I went and looked at the six-fingered man, and I don't look like him. Uh, all right. What would you ask me? Pat Tolbert's comment. When you lean forward, can hear you good. When you lean back, can hardly hear you. Yeah. So uh, I had this microphone that I was using, and I should be using it, but we got down here real late. Like, we ran down here. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and so I didn't hook up my microphone. So we're using the laptop microphone. So next time I'll have a microphone on. So when I lean back, you'll hear better. It says, uh, all right, you should keep the long hair. The long hair stays until I get definitive yes or no on me being in the movie. When is the movie coming out? No idea because of the uh, disease that we're not allowed to talk about and what's going on in the world. Um, Things are moving again. The project is moving forward. That's all I can say. I have no idea until Hollywood comes up with a plan for reopening and starting films and they have to put stuff into contracts for all the actors. That's where we are. That's where we are. We're waiting for all that <coughs> to get sorted out. All the rules and regulations for them guys. Ah, Greetings from the UK. David Turner back to visit us from the UK. Glad to have you here. We're here for the briefings. By the way, we were in town today. We got to go to the grocery store. Stocked up on cheese. They were stocked up on meat. Uh, meat prices were reasonable. There was hamburger for four thirty-nine a pound on average. We went to the grocery small town grocery store in uh, Coleman, and we went to Aldi, uh, Trader Joe's for you uh, coasties. Uh, and, uh, we went to Aldi and they were pretty stocked up on stuff too. I couldn't think of anything that they didn't have. And we even got baby wipes, which they haven't had since March. So, um, yeah, uh, things are, things are, uh, how, how would I put it? They are currently in this tiny little snapshot of a window looking okay. Supply side, uh, uh view Things look horrible and they look bad in the future. But I'm just saying today when we went to the store, if I wanted meat, if I wanted toilet paper, paper towels, cleaning supplies, uh, any of that stuff, flour, uh, butter, cheese. They even had butter. So our local grocery has had butter, but they went to a way more expensive brand and prices had gone through the roof. And today they actually had butter, salted butter for $2.99. We didn't buy any because we don't need any. All right, Nancy says, I got a hose and valve now for my propane space heater. Good job. You can use the 20-pound containers. All right. Instead of 16 ounces. That's, That's good. Much. You're doing good. Keep it going. Get a couple of extra uh, containers built up in your backyard so you have some in case you run out, in case it goes three months and you're not able to get any. Speaking of propane, we were supposed to get propane today. We forgot. But we forgot. I forgot. She actually went as far as popping the trunk so I would see the trunk was open and remember it, and I still forgot. <laughs> Drove around all with the way to town with the trunk open. All right. Hey, guys, did I tell you about this thing? Um, if I can find it. Uh, where is it? What are you looking for? The clean vid thing. Mm. I thought I made a banner for it. It's not. All right, I'll just tell you about it for right now. Um, my friend Sean Tuin, Cambodian friend who uh, wrote God in the Storm, my next book with me, my co-writer. He is also a programmer, and I've talked to you guys a little bit about this, but he has invented a really, really, really cool. It's an extension or a plug-in that goes with, into Chrome. 
and I use Brave, and you should be using Brave, which is a Chrome um, browser, but it's more secure and it's more privacy oriented. And uh, this is a plugin that goes in that. And it's got two elements. You could buy them separately or together. And one of them is um, that it zaps commercials. So if you want to watch this, if you future people are watching this YouTube and you want to see that I don't get paid, you can watch. So people keep complaining and they're like, hey, we're watching your video. And there were 12 commercials. The videos are an hour long. So anyways, 12 commercials is a lot. I don't decide if the commercials sell or, or how many sell or whatever. But uh, if you decide you don't want to watch commercials, I decide I don't usually want to watch commercials. You can put clean bit on there and you click on. And when you're on YouTube, you don't see commercials. And it also, the other element of it that you can get is you can watch movies, anything that streams through your computer, like Netflix, Hulu, um, IMDb TV, uh, a dozen other services, and um, it will zap the uh, anything you want it to zap, like bad words or nudity, or if you don't like the word Trump, you can tell it you don't want to ever hear that word, or Hillary Clinton, or Joe Biden, whatever word you don't like, and you can actually replace it with another word. And even in the captions, in, re in real time, it'll say, whatever you want it to say. And so the reason I'm telling you about it, I'm not getting paid for telling you that, um, is that he's going to be rolling it out real soon. And I just wanted to tell everybody to be anticipating it because it's going to be really, really cool. Uh, and it's called clean vid. And like I said, there's going to be a ad blocking and it's not an ad blocker like you're thinking. So it's not blocking pop-ups when you're on Facebook. It's for blocking commercials on TV that you're watching through your computer. So if you're watching Netflix or you're watching Hulu or you're watching YouTube and you're watching uh, Google Play and you go and rent uh, a movie and they're running commercials on it, bam, no commercials. Easy. If you're like us and you want to watch a Ke Kevin Costner movie, or Kevin Costner series, and you think, I don't have a problem with sex, but I think the sex is gratuitous. I don't think it's necessary for it to be in there. You can, boop, and you don't even see it. It just zaps it out of there. Or if you say, hey, I don't have a problem with sex, but I don't like the word butthole. Can I say that? You just did. <laughs> you, you can zap the word and you can it has like a library of bad words and it automatically will go through it. But you can do whatever you want. If you just don't want the commercials, it'll get rid of them. All right. And so that's coming real soon. And you will hear it from me when it comes out because I'm very excited about it. And um, and I think it's going to be a huge deal. And I think Sean's going to make millions and millions of dollars off of it. Um, and then I also wanted to tell you that this one I do have a banner for, and that is that Sean and I wrote a book called God in the Storm. You need to go order it. You can order it paperback or hardback right now. It's about his family escaping the Khmer Rouge communists in the late 1970s in Cambodia and how they came to America, et cetera, and avoided the uh, genocide of 2.5 million Cambodians by the Khmer Rouge Antifa in uh, the late 1970s. <laughs> so uh, there's that going on. All right. If you guys got comments or questions, now's the time or we're going to have a 15 minute show. Anything you want to talk about? You want to ask Miss Bunker a question? I'm having allergies. This is not that disease that we're not allowed to talk about. <laughs> I'm just having allergies. I've been okay most of the day, but you know, half of uh, Africa is blown through the air. That's why I'm a little swole right here. You look outside and it's, this, it's like a big dust cloud. I haven't had anything, any uh, alcoholic beverages. Uh, 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 he hasn't. It's just a little. Sometimes I'm just excited, especially when my wife's here. I'm, I'm more, um, what do you Jovial. call it? Jovial. Can I talk about setting up a summer kitchen outdoors? Uh, yeah. All right, Pat, we'll get to your thing in just a minute.
Uh, summer kitchen, you, things you want to think about is you want to think about airflow. Make sure that you have plenty of airflow. Make sure that you're able, if you can, to keep bugs out. Uh, although that's not necessary, depending on where you live and, 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 and what your bug situation is. You want to be able to cook uh, even when it's raining. So you want some type of shed roof or tent roof. And then you want to be able to exhaust smoke. So those are the main issues. Fire prevention. So you don't want to have uh, an area where you're cooking where you're going to be dropping coals. And it depends on what type of cooking you plan on doing. Like if you're going to cook on a griddle or a grill, you know, perhaps pour a slab or get gravel or something where uh, coals or uh, 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 embers blowing off aren't going to start a fire, aren't going to blow onto your neighbor's house. Uh, to me, the perfect kind of summer kitchen is a screened house where it doesn't have walls that has screens, but you could actually lower maybe plastic sections if you wanted to use it in the winter. And so it can stay cool. You can can all summer long and catch the breeze, but it still allows the smoke to leak. I hope that helps. If you have any other specific questions, let me know. Michael, with all the craziness going on, do you think the movie is going to go forward? I am torn. <laughs> um, I think the movie is going to go forward until it's not, which means if we, here's what, here's the things that could happen. The thing we're not allowed to talk about could get worse. They could shut down everything again. Hollywood could shut down again. Everything can go back into quarantine. Everybody's going to get more and more existential angst. We're coming up to an election. Things could get ugly. Um, Perhaps we make it through the fall and the winter, and then uh, things start to get better. That's one option. Uh, second option is, same as before, we have a civil war breaks out because of the election or leading up to the election. Something happens that triggers all of these animosities and angers uh, and things that are out there, and we end up with a civil war. Who knows how long that lasts? Uh, that's another option. Third option is, uh, uh, we're, 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 we go into a second um, wave of things, but then things start to get better. And perhaps, you know, maybe by late fall, early winter, things are, are, are starting to move forward again. I don't know what's going to happen. Ceteris paribus, all things remaining equal. If we work under the assumption that this too shall pass and eventually we're going to get through this, then the movie, I believe, will go forward. Uh, absent that, then I think the movie will go forward whenever entertainment moves forward again. If that's a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, if there's a million people left and everybody else died, somebody's going to want to get entertained. So I have no idea. I'm just, I'm praying that it happens. I definitely want the best for everybody. And it still has good momentum behind yeah, it. Yeah. And it's but moving. I just don't want that pause too long. And I'm a positive person. And I hope for the best. I want everybody to be, I want everybody out there to do well, to stay safe, to not get sick, to make a lot of money and go see my movie when it comes out. Yeah. Daniel said, hello, Daniel. And that guy that's with you, that guy. Hi, Daniel. Yeah. You notice Daniel doesn't say anything about my hair or how nice I look. How You'd I probably be. yell at him. I probably would yell at him. So he he's thinks, playing it safe. He thinks the Bunker Nation page is a canning site. True story, Daniel. True story. I have a marketing expert that, that's working with me that's giving me advice on all types of things. And she says, she calls me up and she says, who's Daniel Carr? I said, oh, he's an old friend going back about 20 years. And she says, why does he think that you run a canning site? <laughs> True story. She may be watching this. True story. And I said, well, we don't run a canning site. She goes, well, apparently Daniel thinks you're running a canning site. I said, well, he's a little enthusiastic. She goes, here's what I need you to do. Huh? It's good information. It's great information. It's just not a canning site. If somebody just didn't know what it was and they're like, hey, I heard about this guy. Michael Bunker knows the future. This guy back in March was talking about meat shortages, marketing all this stuff. Let's go check out his page. And then they go to my Facebook and they're like, oh, apparently he runs a canning site. <laughs> the only reason I'm saying that is 
she recommended that I limit the amount of posts. Keep posting as much as you're posting, but they may not all make it onto the page. We want to give the impression that it's not just a canning site. Then post other things. Other people post things, some, but Daniel likes well, to. You. Daniel posts like four or five things a day. I post something, and like two minutes later, there's three Daniel posts, and mine got pushed off the screen. Like my videos, I do this. I push this video up tonight. He'll have like how to can marbles. <laughs> It'll push it off the screen. It's a canning page. I run a canning Facebook page. <laughs> Just post them to his personal page. That's what you ought to do. That's right. That's Just right. Or we could more. start the Bunker Nation canning page. And it'll well, be a separate canning page. People be like, you guys started this new page and nobody nobody posts. No, they, for Daniel. They people post Bob. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bob uh, Crossley just posted just a little while ago about, about the what? coin shortage. Well, it's not about canning. It's not about canning because it's not a canning page. I don't have it's a canning about page. The canning page. Oh, the canning page. Yeah, it's it's all canning, then it's great. That's what you want on a canning page. Hello, Tammy. Hello, everybody. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Pat. If I haven't said hi to you, come on in and say hi. We're just kind of chit-chatting today. I was hoping people were going to have questions for Mrs. Bunker. You're kind of not even on the screen. you got to move <laughs> this way a little bit. And you're, you're behind well, the microphone. I don't want to get hit by the arms. Um, there's a bunch of, hey, there's Amy. Amy Bartley from Prosper. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Say hi to Wayne. <laughs> uh, all right. You are a lot more happy with Danielle by your side. This is absolutely true and is noticeable. It's noticeable. I'm even happier when I'm not doing the show and I'm and I'm by her side. Say it. Me? Yeah, you were gonna say something. No, I wasn't. I was just dodging your compliments. <laughs> you may not dodge them. Um there's a corn shortage. Corn? Or. Coin. <laughs> There's, I have had zero alcohol. There's a coin shortage. Apparently, I think it's a scam. I think there may be a coin cash. shortage, but I think it's being caused on purpose because it's a step towards the cashless society. Because if they can make you round everything up, if they can say we're not taking coins anymore because they got icky, icky germs on them, or we don't have enough coins, you got to pay an exact change. People get irritated, and then they got the whole disease we can't mention, and they're like, hey, let's just use contactless paying. Nobody needs coins and money anymore. <laughs> okay. Daniel said he waved the white flag. Didn't think about that aspect. I'll show more restraint. And and I don't comment on your hair since I have none to compare it to. <laughs> My hair is um, – here's the, here's the honest scoop. I don't like it. I would prefer that it was short. Do you think you're going to be able to keep it long? It, it's on this movie. Seems like it's going to be slow rolled. Yeah, if, even if the movie doesn't come out for three years, I'll have something done. I'll have cornrows or, or uh, one big long braid that I can whip like that and just whack people get knocked out. It'd be like a weapon. But this is my protest. This is my protest. I'm growing this hair. Until either they tell me I'm not going to be in the movie or they tell me I'm going to be in the movie. Either way is fine with me. Um, so anyways, there's a coin shortage. Did you guys know that? And immediately upon me saying it was a scam, my friend Bill says, I work for a bank. It's not a scam. We don't have enough coins. We can't give enough coins out. Didn't explain why. Where did all the coins go? Are they butchering them all? Are they sending them all to China? They're all made out of pot metal. They're not even valuable. Why are we running out of coins? And they're asking that people bring all their jars into the bank so they can have more coins. Why do we have a corn shortage? Let me tell you why. Because it makes it easier to move to a cashless society. And by saying we have a coin shortage, and hey, please bring all your coins in, they're vacuuming up all the excess coins, and they're not going to be redistributed. I hope to continue being a refusenik. Me too. Refuseniks unite. 
or refuse to your <laughs> unite, whichever. Keep your coins, Nancy. Keep your coins. All right. I'm going to put another banner up there just in case somebody wants to partner and subscribe. You know, you could partner and subscribe for as little as five or ten dollars a month. You could support this show. We're going to do a fundraiser here pretty quickly. <clears throat> we got to do a fundraiser because here's what happened. Let me tell you a story. Since back before the 30 day challenge, I've been saying, hey, my solar trailer is dead and I need new batteries. But those batteries have gone up like 300 percent since we first got that solar trailer in 2005. Well, today or this weekend, I was in not this weekend, this week. I was in Lubbock with my parents and my dad and I went to Sam's Wholesale Club and they have those batteries for the same price we paid the first time we redid the trailer in 2010. So we can now get 10 full batteries like brand new for $1,000. So we are about to do a big fundraiser amongst the Bunker Nation. Once we have that taken care of, no more complaints from me about not being able to do the show because we don't have power. We'll be able to charge up stuff. Everything will be cool. And that'll put us back to where we were in 2005 as far as power. That would be fantastic. Friends of my sons feed hungry people for free and they're being called terrorists, yeah? Welcome to America 2020. They're saying that the word 2020 in the future is gonna be like a universal pejorative so you can say like i want you to meet my family but not so much my brother-in-law he's a little 2020 i don't know what's wrong with that guy he went all 2020 on yeah him. that guy was <laughs> fine and then all of a sudden he went 2020 on us or you could say something like um i don't know your honor i was doing fine after that fifth beer i went 2020 <laughs> <laughs> You were thinking about those batteries earlier today. It was going to cost us almost $3,000 to get 10 batteries. And so I wasn't going to get 10 batteries. I was going to get six batteries, which isn't really quite enough to run our system. Now I can get 10 batteries for $1,000. I got to get some cabling and stuff too. But I hope they have those batteries on that sale price for a long time so I can go out and get them. So, but we're going to have a fundraiser. I'll be talking about it here and on the Facebook page over the next day or so, because we need to get this done. We need to get this power thing done. Hello, Mike. Greetings. Are you up in Wisconsin or are you still in Texas? Inquiring minds want to know. All right, y'all. We got 13 um, viewers and we got 11 likes, so we're doing all right as far as that goes. If you are new to the program, make sure that you traverse your way over to YouTube at some point, maybe 30 minutes after this program is over hit the like button and subscribe share it with people if you think it's enjoyable in the meantime we got a few minutes here you can ask mrs bunker some questions ask her what she thinks ask her what she thinks about my hair ask her if she likes to run her fingers through it i don't think you can run your fingers i think you probably lose one <laughs> you like go like that and you come back you're like ah <laughs> chilling in wisconsin I like everything about Wisconsin except the accents. There was we were at my parents uh, this week. I was at my parents this week, and there was a Wisconsin lady. She was a perfectly nice lady. The accents just make me want to choke somebody out. You can get more solar panels. They're cheaper than batteries. I'm the not solar panels aren't good unless you have batteries. <laughs> What do you do with the power? The power has to go somewhere, unless you're using it immediately. I don't need more solar panels. I need to be able to store the power that I'm getting. That takes batteries. <laughs> are you keeping your coins? I have noticed when uh, in store, the clerks, clerks are complaining about change and not having enough. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if we're going to, I mean, we, we try to change it into real things. So take your coins. Take them in, let them give you money for them, but immediately turn that money into something real, like uh, uh, solar panel batteries. <laughs> What's Breck hair? I think he's like showing his age. Breck hair was like um, Breck was shampoo? like shampoo. Yeah. yeah, I think he. I think he's still in the seventies. 
Yes, you can charge fewer batteries faster. That's not my problem. My problem is all of my batteries are dead. So it's not that I need to charge fewer faster. I just need to have batteries. And so um, his hair is pretty nice. That was for Nancy. The perfect balance of me being able to charge all day, have them full, and have them last maybe two to three days is 10 batteries. Been doing this for 20 years, so pretty sure that's what it is. 1970s hair. Yeah, 1970. This isn't 70s hair, is it? It's not. This is not yeah. 70s hair. This is like um, what? That was from a message from my dad. <laughs> what? What? To what would I like in this hair? This hair is um, Christopher Walken. Meets the six the six six fingered man. Turn it into canning. Supplies. Turn it into canning supplies. Beautiful, that's beautiful. If you have enough coinage at home to get you one of those big double D uh, canners that'll do like sixteen quarts, boy, you just turn that into deliciousness. John Wick. That's right. This is John Wick hair. This hair, don't kill this hair's puppy because it will come get you. <laughs> don't kill anybody's puppy. All right, y'all. Did you get your shower project finished? Ah, oh, my dad is sending me messages off the check. Uh, did we get, we got the shower project finished. And then the first week or so that it was finished was middle of the winter and it broke in the freeze. I had not yet figured out exactly what valves to open and it blew, shattered all the pipes. So it exists, it just has to be fixed, but it's low enough on the thing that we wanna get the solar panel system working first. That is our biggest thing. Not for us, cause we can live without it. If you want me to communicate with you, I need to have the solar panels, fixed, the solar panel system fixed. That's the thing. I'm afraid to cut that hair unless I have the proper equipment, Pat. Which is a weed whacker or a scythe. It's worse than we it have. looks. It actually lays pretty good because if you actually, it's actually worse than it looks. But it lays pretty good. Okay. So the thing about having copious hair or being a hairy man is that in the Hollywood world, if you have more, they can do more with it. They can do more styles and stuff with it. They don't have to add it, right? If you don't have it, then they, then they're limited as to what they, they have to use wigs and whatnot. It doesn't. It's not going to look as natural. So I'm I'm going out the real thing because I want to give them all the plethora, the panoply of options. Y'all ask Mrs. Bunker a question. You keep asking me questions. Hallelujah, it's not a mullet. That's right. People are stupid. People are stupid. Just because I push the hair yeah. back and then they go, you got a mullet. That's not a mullet, you moron. I'm sorry if you thought it was, I shouldn't have called you a moron. My wife lectured me today that if I was nicer, that my show would be more popular and fewer people would unsubscribe. <laughs> He has, to, he has to learn how to make friends if he wants to build a YouTube channel. <laughs> I just think my personality is just something. It's, it's a learned thing, right? You got to you, you you once once you get used to it. This is how I am. This is how I am all the time. I'm not different when I'm on here, am I? Which is why he's poor. <laughs> Which is why I'm poor. So uh, I'm not different when I'm not on here. Am I? This is what I'm like. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much exactly what I'm like. I'm right on here 99.8% of the time. He's not as animated at home because he knows he's preaching to the choir. So That and, and at home, I'm only right 99% of the time. It's less than 99.8. Statistically, it's a smaller number. But when I'm on here and I'm talking about the future and the briefing about what's going on in the world, I'm right 99.8% of the time. It may be 0.7. We had a statistical test that was run by our uh, our dog, Rascal. And uh, 
he came out with a whole paper. He was like, yeah, that's pretty much 99.7%. Hey, hey Russ, I actually got a nap today, so I think I'm going to be okay. She, he got a, she got a nap, and she like has to build herself up to do these. <laughs> me, it's just me being me. No, he said, or else you won't make it through day night. Goat having a mullet. I don't know what you're saying, Daniel, half the time. It's like you're speaking in tongues. What do you mean goat having a mullet? Having a mullet would be comical and add to the character. But what's a goat? What's a goat have to do with it? Goa having a mullet. <laughs> See, I That's have to interpret. <laughs> I have to interpret what you're talking about. You wrote goat. <laughs> I think goats have a mullet, pretty much. I don't know. But Goa having a mullet would be comical. But you can do a mullet with this. If they want to put me in the movie and they want to make this into a mullet for the movie, bam, you're good to go. A little business in the front, party in the back. Ready to go. Shave it before he gets home. <laughs> Shave it before I get home. Come home with a little buzz. Back All right, y'all. I'm used to. Huh? Back to the guy I'm used to with the buzz. Yeah. All right, y'all. Hopefully, you're all doing well out there. If you have a question or comment, you got a couple of minutes. Sorry, I hit my wife. Uh, you have a, a minute or two to type one in. We'd be we would love to address it. You know what I didn't do, and I like to do on every show. Um, while she's yawning, we're going to do this. Hold on. You got to have a box exploding at least once during the show. So I was in, uh, I was in Lubbock and, uh, and, and my mom came out with her Bunker Nation shirt on the black ones that you can't get anymore. They're unavailable. But there are uh, these up here. If you look in the corner up here, uh, up here, these navy ones, navy and gold. Those are available at the store. Just go to michaelmarker.com. Go to the swag store. We're going to have a great uh, date night. Thank you, Pat. I want to tell everybody thank you for coming. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Amy Bartley says, our electricity went out the other day for a few hours. And I thought, well, Bunker said. But seriously, how, how do you cope with the heat? Uh, we're used to it. We figure out where to be. That's the coolest place. We don't let it beat our minds because your mind is really the biggest um, uh, impediment. And as you can see, you can't see. You, lift the, you, you keep the air moving. Keep the air moving. Be happy. If you ever have to go without it, the first year is the roughest, and then it gets easy as you figure out the different ways that people a hundred years ago used all, to do. It's all a trade-off. You're sitting there one day and you're hot. You got your fan going that same day, 37 million people are sitting in a car and they're moving about two feet every five minutes for an hour to go get in a cubicle and peck a dot and then drive home. Don't even see their children, but an hour every day. And they die young of uh, colorectal cancer and diabetes. And that disease that we can't talk about. And the about. disease we can't uh, talk about. And so it's a trade-off. Temperature extremes are necessary for the human mechanism. I did a show on that. And uh, not that I encourage people to uh, suffer in an extraordinary way, but embrace discomfort. Jedi mind tricks. That's right. Hey, y'all, we got to go. Appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, I love you. I'll talk to you again maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Glad to have you all here. Subscribe, like, talk to you soon.